Hello, everybody, wherever you may be. Welcome back to Ham Radio Live. This is Kilo 7 Hotel November. My name is Larry, and this is a quick one. We've got to go quick. Contest weekend, testing equipment. Try to test this MFJ 1788 loop antenna to see how well she does around on web SDRs. So we'll start here real quick in Utah. Let's see how we do with Utah. This is at 150 watts off of a three foot magnetic loop antenna. Here we go. Keep in mind, I'm just basically testing. So I'm basically saying this is a test from Kilo 7 Hotel November. This SDR is about 675 miles away. It's in the noise, but it's there, but it's barely there. It's in the noise. Now it's sunrise just about here, so let's try it again. All right, that's antenna three. That's using the the, the rig cam, essentially. We're using the uh, one that we're using here, uh, the um, MFJ 1788. Okay, so that is that one. Let's try this one. Pretty much lost on Utah at this point. All right. So what we'll do is we're going to quickly go back. We need to move fast. And the reason why we have to is because, quite honestly, uh, it's a contest weekend. I don't want to hold up the bands too long. It's just not a good thing to do to people. Uh, frequencies are needed, but I know testing also is, you know, you get there first, you use it, you try and be respectful of other people too. All right, San Francisco. Let's take a listen, see what we get in San Francisco. It's about, um, about 550 to 600 miles away. Trying to get the mouse to wake up on me here. So I can move over. All right, here we go. And audio. Okay, now this is interesting. This is no nothing in San Francisco picking up. So this is out of the skip zone. And I'll explain what I mean here. We're at 7,200. We're going to move now to Maui, okay? This is 2,400 miles away. That's not with doing anything to the SDR. That's simply taking the SDR as it is and saying, here we are. That's it. Now we'll clear frequency. Kilo 7 Hotel November test complete. Returning frequency to everybody else. Thank you very much. All right. So what does that tell us? Well, it tells us on this night <laughs> and this night that um, this little three-foot loop does pretty well, okay? Out of the skip zone in San Francisco. So for new hams, what that essentially means is that you're, you're kind of bumped up. So if San Francisco is here, the skip zone goes up here and comes back down. San Francisco's in the shadow. Won't pick it up. Now in Maui, it is picking it up, all right? It's picking it up right at the edge. Now, again, keep in mind, this is, um, excuse me, this is literally a three-foot aluminum loop that's 22 feet high, horizontally mounted, okay? So 
that is a definite tunable signal in Maui. And considering 2,200 miles over ocean, which is helpful, no doubt about that. But we do have conditions that are a little bit rough this morning. And to be quite honest, I'll take that. It's 150 watts out of a tunable magnetic loop. Now, you could barely hear, I know, the call sign. I kept trying to repeat the call sign on the Maui SDR just to allow people the opportunity to try and pick it up out of the mud. And it's barely readable, but it's there. So what does this tell us? Well, if I were to use more power, which this rig will do, I know that I can be heard louder in Maui and, of course, other places. However, if I were to take this antenna and use it in things like mobile setting, parks on the air, islands on the air, field day, you know, things like this, where you're able to take it out and use it because it's so easy to deploy. My goodness. I'd personally love to put this on a three foot mast right at the edge of a couple of places I know along the Oregon coast, straight shot out in the Pacific. Now, even with 150 watts, not using the full 200 of the MP here, it'd be brilliant. It'd be a fantastic thing to be able to use. So I think what MFJ has done with this, at least from what I've seen here on 40 meters so far, I haven't really went on to 20 or 17 or 15, you know, I haven't done that yet. But on 40, pretty impressed, you know. Um, Want to make a couple of quick little changes here. Um, the, the previous video where we did get two QSOs, one of them was from a friend of mine whose name is Ron. His call sign is K9RM, uh, K9RM. He's located out of Indiana. I said Ohio. So please forgive me for that. It's late and I'm tired. Okay. So forgive me. He's out of Indiana, but that's still over 2,000 miles away, over land. And he heard the signal, which is cool. And then the second one, which was one of those ones you kind of hate to make the mistake on because, you know, I was kind of being a little bit dyslexic on the call, okay, to be quite honest. And, and he was very clear on it. He was not, you know, giving me a problem with it. He was clear, you know, you definitely tell. Dennis Vernachia who is out of the San Diego Contest Club down in San Diego. That is about a 1,000 miles away south, and he was hearing quite well. And keep in mind, he's beaming Asia. So he's beaming west, and he picked us up from the north. Pretty cool. From what it sounds like, their antenna system is about on top of a 900-foot hill. So he's got some pretty good, pretty good... Uh, conditions to work from, especially if you're going to Asia. <laughs> First top is right over the Pacific, similar to what I have. But, man, I'm sure that they have some pretty good equipment at the San Diego Contest Club. So, uh, yeah, I would say that's not, not a problem. So, anyway, that's it. On the MFJ 1788, this is a 15 through 40 meter loop antenna that is tunable as you go up and down each band. And I'm really impressed. I really am for what they were able to accomplish here. And the fact that I know I can hear it, you know, it can be heard 2,000 miles away to the west and 2,000 miles away to the east. And it's in pretty crummy conditions tonight. There's a lot of fade. There's a ton of QRM. And there's a million contesters out there, literally. I mean, there's they're everywhere. And... It took me so long just to find multiple SDRs that didn't have activity on them. That was the hard part. And then, you know, just before I went live with you guys, of course it happens. I um, started to get ready to hit the button to start our, you know, our time together here. And a guy starts calling CQ contest. He never even checked, never even checked to see if frequency is available. Please do that. It's a matter of being polite 
and it's just good practice. Always ask if the frequency is available. Don't just jump onto a frequency and start calling. And he was kind enough. The guy was really cool. He was kind enough to say, oh, I'm very sorry, because I told him I'm up to. Could you please move down or away? And he did. No problem. No questions asked. So that's good. Good on his part. So Charles Arvo in Greenwood, Indiana, K9RM. Charles, thanks again. He was the guy that picked us up on the Worked All States Net over on 7190. So, Charles, thank you. Again, the MFJ 1788, it will do 15 through 40. I have more tests to do. I'd like to do a video on switching bands. I'd like to see how long it's going to take and time it between, say, moving from one extreme to the other. So, moving from 15 to 40. I'd like to see how long that takes because some people that might want to use this might want to know that. Be interesting to find that out, okay? So anyway, Alan, good morning to you. Thank you for joining us today. Well, Alan, where are you watching from, by the way? Let's get you involved in the conversation before we say goodbye to everybody. We uh, appreciate you coming. Thank you for being here today. Um, this doesn't work without a lot of people and truly I want to thank the people of MFJ who have been very helpful for these tests. I do believe in the power of a magnetic loop because I've used them for four decades and I know the power of a mag loop. They just work. So if you want to improve the performance of your station buy a loop, even if you just buy a receive, you know, you buy like say for example, the MFJ 1886 receive only loop. It's perfect. Just a perfect antenna. Alan, very good. Alpha Bravo 8, Alpha Sierra, Huntington, West, West Virginia. Alan, welcome to the show. We're glad to have you here, my friend. How are things? Are you doing the contest, Al? Are you doing any contest this weekend? I know Colorado QSO's on, and on our end, we're getting a ton of traffic going west, especially people who are Midwest, you know, and people going from West. So basically the, almost the Mississippi river line headed West are all beaming West. So it's crazy. It's just crazy. You doing any contesting this weekend? I'm just trying to find an open spot at this point and, you know, transmitting really narrow so I can just fit in between if I can. So anyway, Al, it's good to good to see you. Love to work with you. That'd be a lot of fun. This is a tough time to do that right now with all the people who are on the frequencies, but certainly would like to do that. No contesting for Alan this weekend. Well, let's get together and try and work out a QSO together. I know I would really like that a lot. Okay. So Alan, I'm gonna go because it's 4:49 a.m. and this person hasn't slept yet. I just have had a lot of fun with the antenna overnight. It's been a good review, good antenna so far. So we'll look forward to checking the other the other bands. Alan, thanks for dropping by. For all of you, thanks for being here. We'll see you soon. That's Maui to Ohio. I'm sorry, Indiana. So Indiana to Maui to uh, Hawaii. That's it. Okay. See you guys later. Thumbs up from Alan. Thumbs up from Larry. Kilo Seven Hotel November. You guys have a great day. God bless you. Thanks for watching North America Radio Guide, now known as Ham Radio Live, because it is. See you guys. Bye.